And that's me. As class already, or as Slash already mentioned, I'm employed by Pragma, and I'm running office here. You can see my desk standing right there. We are so hosted with a try fork, and we just started. We are running three weeks, doing different things, running trainings, events like this, and uh, I'm one of the coders at heart, and have a quite huge background in Ericsson, doing continuous delivery there, running quite big projects like clear case from to git migration building up the continuous delivery pipelines and uh, today i would like to share one of the experience i have out of there and the problem is that when you have a continuous delivery pipeline then it might run for quite a while before you from the point where you start then you do build, you probably package, then you run tests, and you maybe test a bit more, and then at some point you deploy to production. And what might happen is if you run those pipelines in parallel, one run might get ahead of another one. And it could happen that, for instance, when you are rolling out the database schema updates, the one which assumes that you have a newer version is coming ahead of the actual update, and you don't want to be there. Just to illustrate the problem, that's a picture. Uh, yeah. By the way, most of you share two things in this room. One, you like automation at some point, and second one, you might not getting right my Slavic accent. <laughs> so, if it's so, just raise your hand, ask the question. It's completely fine. Anyhow, we can see the commits here, like first, second, third. And this one already deployed to the happy customers. And continuous delivery is all about getting the incremental changes to the users to learn from their feedback. And the best case you can do it is to run it by every commit. It's not always possible, but that's one of the best ways, like ideal case. And what's going here, the second run, it's already finished the build, packaged, and now testing. But the third one, for some reason, managed to finish test faster. And now you can think, like, how that could be possible? But I know talented developers who, for instance, remove the test cases if they're not passing, <laughs> cutting down the test execution time. Here you are. And that's only one example. Or maybe it's a good example where they just did the better automation, they removed some timeouts, and it's just running faster. So, you don't want to be here, because this one will arrive here earlier than this one. And then, this guy in there will be very confused. What's going on? So, there are multiple ways how we can solve it. One of them, obviously, is not to run things in parallel. <laughs> but, if you really want to get a fast feedback, and you have an organization which commits quite a lot, for instance, if you have 10 developers doing the commit a day and your delivery pipeline takes an hour, then it might take up to 10 hours for one person to get the feedback on his changes, which is longer than his working day. And it might be not really acceptable. It all depends from place to place, but you decide. So idea is to use Jenkins Checkpoint API. And here we're getting a bit dirty, the dirty details of Jenkins and the build flow plugin to actually synchronize execution of those pipelines. So, and yeah, build flow is old thing, and it allows you to describe your build, uh, your build jobs execution order as a code, which is quite handy. You basically write it in Groovy. New thing, which is supposed to replace build flow is workflow, and now Cloud is pushing that a lot. And I eventually maybe redo this presentation to run workflow, but build flow is most popular right now. So, tools that we're gonna use it's Docker, Jenkins, JobDSL is a really nice plugin that you have to use. If you're not using it today, take a look. I might do another presentation on it. It basically allows you to describe your job configuration as a code, and then you can regenerate the whole Jenkins configuration out of the configuration file which is very handy. And that allows you to go inter 
create and destroy scenarios. Basically, you can speed up the Jenkins instance, generate all jobs out your repository and have it up and running. If it's not behaving, you just spin up another instance and generate all jobs. We will need to have some Groovy and the build flow. And it's basically all slides I have, so now we have to jump in into more technical things. I have all steps in the repository, so you will be able to repeat them if you clone it. And I also have a description what it's all about. So first thing that I'm gonna use is a Docker machine. How many of you using Docker or know what it is? Not many. Oh, like a half maybe. So Docker is a uh, Linux containers that allows you to run your application in isolation. And that's quite handy. But currently it can be run natively on the Mac OS. So that's why you have to use a tool called Docker machine to, to create the virtual box machine where you will run your Docker containers. And uh, basically Docker machine is just a thing that you use to provision your virtual machines. And we're about to just do everything live. So I'm gonna create one now. I have a backup just in case, so if it all goes wrong. But idea is quite simple. The Docker machine will run headless virtual box. You can select other drivers, you can use VMware, you can run it on the Amazon EC2, whatever you like. They have quite many options. I think they have bindings to Google Cloud Engine, but right now I just want to do it all local. And, uh, let's see. Probably want to zoom in so you can see it. It takes a few seconds to kick virtual machine off and it's actually a big difference. So Docker is much more lightweight. It takes around a second to kick off Docker container comparing to virtual machine that takes a minute or two because those ones used by Docker machine is a really tiny one optimized to run in Docker. And here we are. So I got my virtual machine running and since I'm about to run Jenkins inside the virtual machine, inside the container, inside that virtual machine in the headless mode, I really want to set up a port forwarding so I can use my browser to see Jenkins outside of the virtual machine. And we can do it easily by running the, this command. And this one will basically map port 8080 from virtual machine to port 8080 on my host machine. Takes just a second. And then Docker machine itself allows you to directly SSH into virtual machine that we created. And here I am, I'm inside and I have all environment required for development. But basically for now, we only need Git and Docker because I'm about to clone this repository. Step in into the directory we have there. And as you can see here, we have multiple files. So Docker file is the main one. And Docker file is a build file that allows you to describe how your container should look like, what you should have inside. And it also allows you to inherit other containers. So here I'm using the Jenkins container of this version. And that's another lesson that you can take out of this presentation. All this use version, never rely on latest. You really want to have your things baseline because then latest can change over the time and something that worked yesterday might not work today. And uh, also this container written in a such handy way so I don't really need to run many steps there. I just need to provide a plugins.txt file and run the script, which is already inside there, inside container, and that will install Jenkins plugins I want. And also I copy in a few Groovy configuration files that will modify Jenkins on a startup. Basically, it all looks very simple. 
So plugins txt contains only plugins I need. So it's a job DSL with version, build flow and build graph. You don't really need the build graph actually, but it's there anyhow. And uh, groovy scripts, they look like this. So if you know the Jenkins internal model, that doesn't make sense for you. If you don't, and you use it in Jenkins, then you should learn it. Anyhow, that allows me to set number of executors on master to 30 on a startup. Just one liner. And another one, which is not a one liner, oh no, I have a quiet period, which just set the quiet period for the jobs to zero, so we don't need to wait for a very long time. And this one, a bit bigger. So what I'm doing here, I have Groovy that creates the seed job required by the job DSL in order to generate all other jobs. So I don't need to create it manually when we run the demo. And we don't really want to go through it right now, but because we will see how it looks like when we run the Jenkins. And that's basically it. So I have a Docker file and using Docker file, I can build a container that will contain Jenkins with all those settings applied with all those plugins installed, just ready to go. The only thing I want to show you is um, maybe the build file for the Jenkins itself. So that's a Docker Hub where you can download containers if you like to. And Docker file for Jenkins is quite nice and it gives you understanding what's docker all about so docker allows you to document all steps that you do to create your development environment so here the else inherit container which already have java 8 installed but then they basically run up get up get update and all those things it's what you usually do when you're setting up your development environment but it's already done and when you're downloading container it's already there ready for you to be used and what I need to do in my <coughs> Docker file is just add a few lines. And that's really well written. So if you're looking for a good example of Docker build file, that's the one you should look into. All right, so coming back to my demo here. And the comment I need to use is basically this one. Just want to check this one. This does show how fast it is. A virtual machine restarting it three times. So why now? Yeah. We do it in maybe one restart. <laughs> <laughs> so this is fast, yeah. Well, but let's talk about Jenkins, not the Docker. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I really like to have that running. Now something happening. All right. Yay. Thanks, God. Ah. Always do a backup. <laughs> so, what we see here, as you, as you can see, the Groovy script was executed straight away, and I have 30 executors on master, and I won't show. I won't go into the settings to show you that. The timeout is zero only, but what we're interested in is in to look into seed job that's about to generate multiple jobs for us. And one job is going to be a build flow, which we call trigger. And it's basically will allow it to run in parallel and we will use this build flow to orchestrate execution. And then I'm about to generate those five jobs, and those are really dummy jobs. As you can see, first one, allow it to run in parallel and have only one build step, which basically will sleep for a random number of seconds, which will be passed as parameter from the build flow. And all other is just a copy of first one. So we save it and we run it. And here we go, we have five jobs, actually six, seven instead of one. And we're mostly interested in this one, because here you might see the 
build flow plugin and it's just usual groovy so what I'm do, doing here is creating a string random generator and then uh, build flow it's a DSL language that allows you to kick off builds you can do it in a plain groovy in a Jenkins JVM but it takes more lines of code to do so but that's really handy so I basically creating the build of the job step one and I'm passing the parameter random that will be randomly generated and then in the end when this build is finished I will set description for it as this string and you will see why we need it and basically we will do the same for all those four and we want to synchronize execution of the deployment step which is step number five so what we do here we create a checkpoint and basically checkpoint if you go to google and do jenkins ipi checkpoint that will bring you to the jenkins ipi which describes what checkpoint is and it's really really handy so for instance those build objects they will be instances of jenkins ip abstract build and then from the build flow you can call any methods or access any field and do a lot of nitty things there so if you are still using ui to configure your jenkins stop doing that that's the future I have a question. All right. Uh, so, 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 what you're saying is that build flow with build flow, you can pretty much replace what you're doing in uh, the UI. Jenkins. With job DSL, job with DSL job allows DSL. you to have your Jenkins configuration in repository, and build flow allows you to orchestrate execution. Okay, so you can have things running in parallel and yeah, whatnot, yeah. depending on. Each yeah, other. and you can join parallel execution. It's really handy. But what's happening right here is I'm creating a checkpoint. And I will say block. It's basically wait for all previous execution of this flow, and all when they done, only then run step five and then release a checkpoint. And now I'm gonna show you how that works. It actually works like a charm. So I about to kick off around 30 flow executions. Maybe a bit more. And science. Every of those jobs have a random sleep in that, so they will take a bit longer or go a bit faster. We don't really know. But what we are interested in is to see the project step number four. We have to wait a bit for some jobs to get there. Yeah, it's now actually running. So, as you remember, when they finished, we will get session description. And that will be a build number of the build flow. So you see 18 actually came first and all previous 18 builds they are not here but step number five is not running it's waiting for the first session to arrive and only after that it will be executed. So you see now we got something and that was session one so that's basically a build flow I kicked first then you have session two and at the same time, you have the whole mess going on here. They just arrive randomly. But they keep waiting for other to finish here. Isn't that cool? <laughs> you just wrote a three lines of code and I saw people doing all possible crazy things. Like have a shared file on NFS that they use as a blocking and but if you dig in into Jenkins you can do amazing thing the drawback of touching IPI is that then you're becoming dependent on IPI changes if IPI change with the Jenkins upgrade it's not happening that often they have a pretty stable IPI but still you might be affected and then you will have to dig in and figure it out what have been changed and how to fix it. But it allows you to do all possible crazy things like creating slaves dynamically, changing jobs dynamically. You really have to learn it. And uh, in order to get started with this, you can 
go to manage Jenkins, it's available. I mean, you have a script console here where you can write Groovy and you have example in here. For instance, this one will give you a list of all plugins installed. Uh, here we go. That's all plugins we have. And well, we have to stop here because I'm really big fan of Jenkins and I can talk for hours. So thank you for your attention.